For my contribution project, I decided to research Jane Edna Hunter. In the pictures above represent different moments of her life that she has contributed to the association as well as the cause that she has fought for. Jane Edna Hunter has fought for so, so much that she deserves to be recognized for her contributions. In 1882, she was born in Pendleton, South Carolina. Her mother, Harriet Mil Milliner Harris, was born free, while her father, Edward Harris, was the son of a plantation owner, overseer, and a, his mother was a slave. Hunter, when Hunter turned 10 years old, her father died, therefore ending the opportunity to further her education. She had to financially support her family so she worked as an in-house servant. At 14 years old, she was invited to attend the Ferguson Academy to further her education. After done at the academy, she realized that she no longer wanted to work its domestic work. Her mother then urged her into a loveless marriage with a man named Edward Hunter, who was 40 years older than she. The marriage lasted for 15 months before Jane Hunter decided to, to separate from her husband. She then attended the Hampton Institute in Virginia to train to be a nurse. Many family and friends urged her to move to Cleveland, Ohio. So in 1905, Hunter arrived in Cleveland, Ohio. She was a 23-year-old single black woman who had a difficult time finding housing and as well as a job because of segregation and racism issues. She reached out to the YWCA to obtain housing, but they would not assist her because they were a primarily white institution. Hunter eventually found housing as well as a job, but during her struggles, she realized that she wanted to help others who would face similar obstacles. So Hunter gathered seven women who went through a similar situation and they moved to Cleveland. They all agreed that the city officials, as well as the facilities such as the YWCA, could not help them or others in their similar situations. So they formed the Working Girls Home Association. Each woman would give a nickel as well as a prayer a week to help start up their organization. This organization faced some opposition. The opposition came from an older middle class black women who have long time resided in Cleveland. They believed that the Working Girls Home Association was building up segregation that they fought so hard to break down. While the w YWCA was relieved because they no longer had to integrate their institution. In 1913, the Working Girls Home Association decided to rename their organization as the Phyllis Wheatley Association after the African American, the first African American to publish a book of poetry. Phyllis Wheatley was able to buy her freedom through writing poetry and off the profits she made. In 1913, the Phyllis Wheatley Association opened its first home. It has 23 rooms, room house on East 40th Street. This became the first to offer assistance to African Americans at this time. Hunter realized that this resource was much needed when they, when the capacity was full the moment that they opened. They found out that the housewives of Cleveland needed maids, so they opened a facility to train women in domestic skills to obtain a job. When they first opened in 1913, Hunter served as the chief administrator for the association. In 1915, the association asked Hunter to work full-time. She worked as the chief fundraiser. She was a liaison between the white community and the organization, and she was the executive director. She oversaw daily operations from day to day. By 1922, the Phyllis Wheatley Association, also known as the PWA, served residents as well as the African-American neighborhood. They provided facilities such as the cafeteria as well as classes, they had a gym as well as a basketball team, and during the summer, they had a camp for any city children. In 1918, the Welfare Federation of Cleveland accepted PWA as a member. This meant that the organization received regular financial support from the community. In 1920, the Negro Welfare Association, also known as the NWA, asked Hunter to join the their board. In 1925, Hunter attained her law degree so she can help negotiate contracts. The contributions made by Hunter have not gone unnoticed. In 1928, she was invited to be a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha chapter. She repeatedly was elected as president and VP of the National Association of Colored Women. 
and she received honorary degrees from a variety of institutions. After retirement from the PWA, Hunter established the Phyllis Wheatley Association, Phyllis Wheatley Foundation. Independ this foundation was independent of, of the organization to raise money for young black women seeking a college degree. In 1971, Hunter died in Cleveland, Ohio of natural causes. She left the state to provide scholarships. In 1940 and 1941, she, she published an autobiography called A Nickel and a Prayer of the times and obstacles she faced while supporting the Phyllis Wheatley Association and creating it. Dr. Rhonda Thompson, Rob, Dr. Rhonda Robinson Thompson is Associate Professor of English at Clemson University. She found Hunter's book and brought it to the class. This sparked interest of, the sto of Hunter's story and others have decided to make a documentary about her life to share. Hunter is a selfless woman who is every moment of her life has given to the cause that she supported. She is persistently committed to the cause of racial uplift in Cleveland uh, in the Cleveland area as well as other areas in the country. Jane Edna Hunter is an amazing woman who has contributed so much to the society.